Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to Trinity. We are grateful that you are here. We are, well, yesterday was Epiphany for those of you keeping track in your calendars at home. Today is baptism of our Lord. So we are giving thanks for baptism in our lives, which means during worship today, uh, after the sermon, after the song, we will be affirming our baptism. So we will use the same words that we would be using if this was a confirmation service, except that we will apply them to ourselves. So today is an opportunity for us to be thinking about our baptism, maybe not the specific moment, but what, how that has impacted our life, being claimed by God in that way. So we'll be hearing those themes all throughout worship. All this month, we are in a new season. So that means some of the words that we have up here are going to be a little bit different, some of the prayers that we share. So, of course, we remind ourselves all the words for worship are up here. All the songs are in the red book, marked worship on the binder in front of you in the pews. So that we all know, some of us may already know, but so that we all know, um, our sister Margie Stauffer died, <coughs> excuse me, died Friday morning, early Friday morning. She had been under the care of hospice for a few days. Um, and so we give thanks for that profound ministry. And I'm always grateful that we have Serenity House here in this county. Uh, being a rural county, that's not always a resource we have available. And we have truly one of the best in Northern Illinois. So we were grateful that they were caring for Margie and for, uh, for Gail and for Brian um, through that entire journey. Margie, uh, her funeral, we'll talk about the details of that during the announcement, but that funeral will be this coming week. Um, so we'll continue to pray for Gail, for Brian, for their kids, and for the extended family, and for each other, because Margie was, uh, continues to be a significant saint of this congregation. That looks like everything we need to know for worship this morning to get ourselves on the same page. As we prepare ourselves for worship, thank you, Lisa, for leading us in the music. Friends, let us begin. Friends, will you please rise as you're able. <clears throat> Gathered together before God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we make our confession seeking forgiveness and mercy. Amen. God of awakening, we confess our disbelief that your Son dwells in our world. We remain silent when words are needed and hesitant to extend Christ's mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess our refusal to follow Christ when called. We plant our feet in our traditions and expectations. We wait for results before offering grace. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. We confess our assumption that evil will prevail. We allow hateful words to be spoken without challenge. We turn aside while our neighbors are denied their humanity. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. People of God, though our sin turns us from God's steadfast love, our Lord receives us and redeems us, restoring us to life. In baptism, we are claimed as God's own. In the word, we hear our names called with love. In Christ, we are made whole, bearing the image of God. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awake, O sleeper, rise from death, and Christ shall give you light. So learn his love, his length and breadth, his fullness, depth and height. To us on earth he came to bring from sin and fear release, to give the Spirit unity, the very bond of peace. For us Christ lived, for us he died, and conquered in the strife. Awake, arise, go forth in faith, and Christ shall give you life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That me live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For your spirit to guide that you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. God is good all the time. Then let us pray. God of life, in you we find our salvation. With you we are promised everlasting grace. Draw us into water to remember your nearness and hear your unwavering love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Good morning. So I thought since yesterday was Epiphany that we'd walk around for our children's sermon today. So follow me. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Have you guys ever been on a long walk before? No? Yes? Yes or no? Maybe? Where did you go on a long walk? Have you ever been on a long walk, Miles? No? Well, I know you guys have probably been hiking with your grandpa. Oh, yeah, we did go hiking. Yeah, you did go hiking once. So that, was, that could have been a long walk. I went on a long walk to see some butterflies in Mexico once. It was like never ending. People kept saying, oh, you know, it's only 100 more yards. Well, that lasted for like a mile. It was a long, long walk. And it was like, OK, we're almost there. And then we're like, OK, are we there yet? No, we weren't there. OK, we're almost there. Well, so what do you think that? Um, the wise men were thinking when they were walking. Because they were following a star, right? Sounds kind of weird to just follow a star. That's what I think. How far do you think we should walk? We could make this last all day. Let's go up here. So they were following a star that was leading them to Jesus. That's a pretty good destination, I think, but do you th I think the walk was probably really far. They might have been from another country even. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think that it was pretty far. But do you think that it was worth it in the end? Yeah. Well, it makes long walks easier if they're worth it in the end. And I think that seeing Jesus at the end was definitely worth it. Right? Yeah. So in our lives, we need to make sure that we're always looking toward Jesus, right? Because sometimes you're not sure which way to go. So if we're looking towards the cross and towards God, then he will help us know which way to go. Did you know that? <laughs> you guys are very talkative. <laughs> but I think it's important for all of us to remember to always look toward Jesus, and he'll help us in our life know which way to go, right? Okay, let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for this day and for each one of us and for leading us every day. Please help us to remember to follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the Spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven. You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o 
Well, as Melissa noted, yesterday was Epiphany, for those of us who observe, and today is Baptism of our Lord, and today in the reading that we just heard, we hear about the Baptism of Jesus. We, by the way, do this every year. Epiphany always lands on January 6th, and the Baptism of our Lord, Baptism of Jesus, that particular worship event usually happens pretty close afterwards, within a few days. Today, it's 24 hours. So because these events happen every year, it gives us an opportunity to imagine how we are being drawn and led by God to follow God, and we are also invited to remember baptism, specifically your baptism, and you get to remember your baptismal story, whether or not you remember the details of your story. Now, as someone who has a profound privilege to baptize, to welcome people into God's family through these waters, I've gotten to do this for quite a while now, so there's a lot of different folks who rumble across my mind at this time of year because we do this every year. I think about different stories. I think about different kiddos, different adults. And inevitably in my mind comes the story of these two young sisters who I had the privilege of not baptizing, but I got to be in the moment when they were baptized. These two sisters were 10 and 12. They were part of my teaching parish at seminary. When you enroll in seminary, which all of you should do at some point, I invite you to do that. You take a couple classes and you immediately get assigned to a teaching parish. And the teaching parish is the place where you go and hang out for a few hours a week to just observe. You're just kind of taking notes. You don't really do a whole lot because you're pretty new to the game and starting to learn the ropes of what it means to be in a congregation as one of the leaders. So I'm just there observing, taking notes in this parish that's on the north side of Chicago. And this was an old, old church with lots of tradition. It was one of those high liturgy churches, which in the Lutheran world, a high liturgy church is is kind of like smells and bells. We have, if there's a cross to be carried, someone's going to be carrying a cross. If there's candles to be carried, there'll be candles being carried about. They'll carry a Bible out to the middle of the space, and there's all sorts of things. And then on our super fancy days, that's when we get out the incense. This was, this church was like that. That's actually a detail that's helpful for this baptismal story. So this church sat about a block away from this middle school, where, of course, every day kids were let out, as you would expect would happen at a school, and some got on a bus, and some got in cars, and some would walk home because it was a neighborhood school, and some kids had nowhere to go. So this church, at some point in its life, discerned that it was going to start a mentoring program and welcome some of those kids who had nowhere to go to come hang out in the fellowship uh, hall for a couple of hours, and if they wanted to work on homework, they could work on homework. If they want to play, play games, they can play games. If they just want to sit on a couch and listen to the music in, their, hear, in their, uh, their headphones, they can do that, whatever they want to do. And if everybody had horrible behavior day, it didn't matter because everybody got fed. The day ended with a very simple meal, you know, hot dogs and mac and cheese, but everybody got fed no matter how bad the day went. So in the midst of all these kids who came over were these two sisters. They were 10 and 12 at least when I got to know them. And they, got a really, they formed a really good relationship with their mentor. And the mentor, because she was part of the church, invited them to come to worship. And weirdly, they came. And they sat all the way in the back, as one does when you enter into a new space and are uncomfortable. They would sit back there. The mentor would sit with them back there, all the way in the back, And because we were a church that was high liturgy and had all the things going on all the time, the pastor was always looking for people to do things like carry candles or carry a Bible or carry a cross. And we had these two young girls who were happy to do that. So the pastor would recruit them to have roles in worship, which means they became engaged in the entire congregation. And then at some point, this 10 and 12-year-old, these sisters discerned that they wanted to be baptized. I'm sure the pastor did his due diligence and reached out to the adults responsible for these two young girls. No one had ever met them except for maybe the mentor, maybe the pastor. I had never seen them. They never came to worship with these two young girls, but they wanted to be baptized, so we made that happen, and because they were of that age, they got to help shape that baptismal event for themselves. And the fellowship hall of this church was kind of like on the other side of this wall. It wasn't in the basement like ours is. And we decided that we were going to lay out this big old tarp because they wanted to be immersed. They didn't want this little sprinkling thing that Lutherans traditionally do. They wanted the full meal deal. So we got an oversized kiddie pool, filled it full of water, and we processed ourselves with the cross, the candles, and all the stuff that some churches do, and we marched into the fellowship hall, and we sang, and then the pastor, with all of his gear on, jumped into the kiddie pool, made a big old splash. And then the 10-year-old, 
jumped into the water, made a big old splash, and then she knelt down, he knelt down, and she was soaked in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and she stepped out. And someone was waiting there. Obviously, we planned all this out. Someone was waiting the moment that she got out, and she was enwrapped in one of those super thick, warm, terry cloth towels that for her ran from her head all the way to her toes. And then her sister jumped in and knelt down and was soaked to the bone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And she climbed down and was wrapped in her own towel. And then we all affirmed their baptism by singing. And it was amazing and it was joyous. It was, it was fantastic. As I was thinking about that baptismal moment, that, that particular story, because it comes to my mind every year about this time of year, it dawned on me this year that that was 2003. That was 20 years ago that that 10-year-old and that 12-year-old were baptized. I don't know their names. I don't know if they, you know, remained part of that congregation long after I left, and it doesn't matter. I don't know if they graduated from high school. I don't know if they went off to college, community school, Votech, joined a union. I don't know if they got married, if they found a life partner. I don't know if they ever had kids, adopted kids, maybe chose to live by themselves, bought a condo downtown, maybe bought a ranch in Wyoming, maybe learned how to cut cattle. I don't know what happened with their life. But I know this, and you know this, that wherever they went, whatever they did, wherever they are today, they are marked with the cross of Christ forever. They are God's people, that wherever they go, wherever they've been, and wherever they will go, God goes with them. So we gather around this water on this particular Sunday and remembering the baptism of Jesus, at least Mark's version of the baptism of Jesus, and so I invite you to think about your baptismal story, and I know that I just gave a really kind of over-the-top version of a, bi- of a baptismal story, and we have the, the baptism of Jesus, which in the realm of this space is probably, you know, kind of a bigger-than-life story because, I mean, it's Jesus. So we think of our own baptismal story, and maybe for some of you, most of you looking around, you don't know your story. Maybe mom and dad told you your story. Maybe grandma and grandpa, beloved aunt and uncle, someone from this church, if you were part of this church, maybe they have told you your story, but odds are for many of you glancing around, you were probably baptized when you were about this big. My baptism happened when I was exactly one month old. I've seen a couple pictures. I've seen the baptismal certificate. I've never really asked my parents about that particular day. They looked like they were happy. I think I was happy for maybe a moment. I have no idea. I don't remember the details. You may not remember the details, even if you were an adult and baptized in these waters. You may not remember all the details, and it's okay. Mark doesn't really care about the details. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, we already know that John has been calling people out into the wilderness, out to where there is fear and terror and dread and turmoil and doubt, calling them out. So they leave, and somehow that sermon works. And they leave their homes, and they leave their villages, and they leave their businesses, and they leave their farms, whatever they're doing. You can almost imagine people dropping everything and running out to the wilderness, which is normally where you don't want to be. And they go through the wilderness and they get to the Jordan River to the water's edge. And there they are baptized in the translation that we heard in order to change their heart and life to receive forgiveness for sins. And then John tells these people, I'm sure continues to tell these people, it's great that you're out here. It's really good. This is a great moment for us to share together. But someone is coming who I'm unworthy to untie their sandals. I can't even see myself as a servant or slave in their presence. But when they come, they will baptize us in the Holy Spirit, which means they will be the ones who will bind us to God forever. And then along comes Jesus. He comes from Nazareth, but we don't know anything about him. We don't have his history, no biography, no resume. He just shows up. We're not even sure if he actually has blonde hair, blue eyes, and beautiful skin tone, even in all that sun. But he shows up. And he gets in the water. Mark doesn't even tell us whether or not he talks to John. He doesn't necessarily talk to the crowds. We don't know if there's anybody else around. Maybe this was a private moment. Maybe there were thousands of people around and everybody was in awe. Mark doesn't tell us whether or not anybody else hears God speaking. We just know that the the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove and that God anoints Jesus as God's son and calls Jesus beloved. 
But we don't know if anybody else heard that. We don't know a lot of details about this baptism. Because for Mark, sometimes the details don't matter. In fact, for Mark, a lot of the details don't matter because what Mark wants his people to know, what Mark wants you to know, is that where you are, Jesus is there. There's a group of people in this story who are in this water, presumably. They're getting baptized by John. So that's where Jesus needs to be. In the Gospel of Mark, as we get introduced to Jesus week after week through the month of January, really throughout the whole year, we'll be reading this Gospel. But especially in the next month, we're going to be hearing Jesus casting out demons and healing the sick and doing all these really amazing, well, quite frankly, all these Jesus things that Jesus does. But each one of these people who Jesus encounters, they can't help themselves. Like, they can't heal themselves. They can't cast out their demons. They can't fix their circumstances. They can't, in our language, save themselves. You and I may not remember the moment when we were baptized in these waters. We may never have been even told the story of the baptism that we were given. But we know that when we step out from these waters, just like everybody in the Gospel of Mark, whether we have that detail or not, we know what life is like. You wind up back in the wilderness. That's where the fear, the terror, the doubt, the disappointment exists. That's where we find ourselves, whether we take ourselves there through our own sinfulness or because we just wind up there because it gets thrust upon us. The world is a broken, disappointing, fearful place. That the moment that we step out of these waters, the moment we step out of this space, if this space is a shelter for us, that we enter back into the world, we enter back into the wilderness, and that is truly where we dwell. That's what we know. Not the 45 minutes to an hour to maybe two hours we spend in this space on a given weekend. What we know is fear and disappointment and doubt and pain and brokenness. All the ways that we turn in on ourselves, all the ways that we turn against our spouse, our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our classmates, and all the ways that they turn on us. We know that world. That's the wilderness. And in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus goes to the wilderness because that's where we are. We're in the water, so Jesus gets in the water. We're walking in the wilderness, so Jesus walks in the wilderness. We wind up out in the world being sick, consumed by the demons that consume our lives and consume our relationships and tear us apart, and that's where Jesus appears. That's where Jesus finds us. Because we were found in these waters, we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are marked by the cross of Christ forever. So that wherever you go beyond these waters, God is with you. Because we know what it's like, right? You leave this space. All right, maybe we don't even have to leave the space. Maybe it takes all of 10 seconds, and we're immediately beginning to turn away from God. Maybe it's 10 minutes. Maybe you're really good at this, and you can go a whole hour but at some point, we will turn away from God. We will disbelieve God's love. We will disbelieve God's grace and forgiveness for our lives. We will disbelieve that God is at work in this broken, chaotic, disappointing world. But we are bound to the Holy Spirit. We are bound to Christ. We are bound to new life. So at some moment, we will pass by water. At some point, we will wash our hands. At some point, we will splash water on our face, and we will be turned back to God again. We will remember again that we are renewed, we are recreated, that we are loved so dearly by God that God will get into the water where we are. And this happens every day. Sometimes it happens every breath that we get to remember again the depths of God's love for us. That's your baptismal story. Yes, it begins with these waters, and some of us might have gotten sprinkled, and some of us might have got dunked. Some of us might be discerning. We might have friends and folks in our lives who are deciding, wondering within themselves whether or not they want to be encountered by God through these waters. This is where it begins. In the Gospel of Mark, we begin with water. We begin at the water's edge, but we know because the Gospel of Mark continues on, Jesus continues on. You and I continue from these waters. Your baptismal story is ongoing. It is daily. It is every hour. It is every moment. It is every breath being claimed by God, loved by God, encircled by God's grace, forgiven and redeemed and turned back to God again so that we can seek reconciliation and forgiveness with those with whom we have done harm 
And maybe as the Holy Spirit moves through us, seek reconciliation for those who have harmed us. Your baptismal story is ongoing. It is daily. And each time that you take a step, each time that you take a breath, each time that you splash water on your face, you are given a promise that is unbreakable. It is a promise that is lasting. It is a promise that will continue with us every day of our lives in this space and will carry us into God's grace even beyond this world. So remember the promise. You, friends, no matter where you go, no matter what you've done, no matter where you will be this Thursday morning, you are marked by the cross of Christ forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, will you please rise? We are people created, chosen by God. Then we're washed ever gently in mercy and love. Sin has power no more. Jesus opened the door to a fountain, bringing healing and wholeness and more. We are fed and we're nourished, filled and refreshed. Then our hunger returns and again we are blessed. For whatever the need, God is greater indeed. Endless ocean, always deeper than all of our need. We are nourished by water, all living things, and by life that the Spirit abundantly brings. As we journey toward home, may your presence be known, precious river ever flowing, now carry us home. Now with praise and thanksgiving, we join the song. All our welcome we gather to sing loud and strong. Not enslaved, but set free. From now on all will be one in Jesus, one in water, baptized and set free. Friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty and creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, <clears throat> the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the world, the church, and all of creation. Let us pray. God of life, speak your promise into our daily experiences. Find us where we are and turn us toward your love. Remind us through simple encounters and significant moments that you are moving through us, granting us grace. Lord, in your mercy. God of interactions, give us the words we need to share your baptismal story with others. Calm our dread and settle our hesitation that when you provide the opportunity, we can speak about your grace. Guide us to be a voice of hope for one seeking mercy. Lord, in your mercy. God of wandering, you guide people of curiosity by the stars, fires, storms, and light. Draw your people into the peace of your presence. Lead us toward the mystery of your abundance in this world, dwelling in our streets and in our homes. Lord, in your mercy. God of welcome, protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us. Accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Shape our arms and walls to be a place of rest and security for immigrants and new residents. Lord, in your mercy. God of every age, nations rise and fall. The powerful are lifted and toppled from their thrones. Guide our elected officials to act and speak with humility and compassion. Turn our thoughts from accolades toward acquiring resources and protection for your vulnerable ones. Quiet the words that compel division. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, care for the sick and suffering, especially those we lift to you now in our, in our voices and in our hearts. With all those who we carry with us, we also pray for Joshua, Connie, Irene, Barb, Claudia, Carrie, Kelsey, Jack, Barbara, Ron. We pray for the family of Margie Stoffer. We pray for the family of Dennis Kruger. We pray for the family of Cheryl Christians. We pray for family and friends who are dealing with difficult illness and diagnoses. Bring wisdom to medical teams and grant rest to the weary. Lord, in your mercy. Trusting in your mercy, we close these prayers as together we say, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with your neighbor. God's peace. Yeah, um, actually, your sister just gave me the obituary for that. Yeah.
you again to our youngest worshipers for reminding us of the joy of, of being generous. All this month and next month, we are going to be gathering our coins and our designated gifts for LOMC. So we give thanks for that, for that partnership that we have that is so close to our congregation. Grateful for the years that we have had the privilege of working with them and continue um, to build up that camp and that resource for not just this area, but serving the whole state, this whole regional area. So again, thank you for your generosity for that. Man, Legos. Um, I feel that pain. Um, as you look through the bulletin, you can read through this. You can read through the newsletter just as easily as I can. We have a lot of newness going on. We're in a new year. Um, I invite you to uh, join in our reading of the Gospel of Mark through the, through the reading schedule that, that is in your bulletin. And we'll have a Bible study on that in a couple of weeks if you want to participate in that. But I commend those to you. Um, if you are interested in being a greeter, which is really truly as simple as stand at the door and say hi. Um, if you would like to be a greeter, we would love to know that you are up for that and we are making our 2024 list. Um, so let, um, maybe don't let me know because I am horribly forgetful of things, um, but let the office know. Um, I, I think if it's not up, we will have a sign-up sheet for that. And with that, we are gonna have after worship today and in two weeks after worship, we are gonna learn how to use collectively, we're gonna learn how to use the lift, which seems really easy and actually is really easy, but sometimes deceptively easy because sometimes we might treat it like an elevator and it's not an elevator, it functions just a little bit different. And those little bit of differences actually make a lot of difference in how well it's gonna function for you. So to build up your confidence, the property team is going to be doing a couple of trainings on Sundays, and we're going to have one on Saturday night for our, for our Saturday night worshipers as well. So take a couple of minutes, grab your coffee, hang out in the bell tower space here, learn about that device, and, um, and then collectively we will be able to more easily welcome those in this community who uh, might have a, a physical disability or physical challenge to gather with us for worship. Like I said, you can read through this just as easily as I can, see what's going on in the life of the church, see how you are being moved and called into fellowship in this community. Will you please rise as you're able, and we will prepare for communion. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have poured out a large measure of earthly blessings. Our table is richly adorned and our cup overflows. Turn our thoughts toward you and away from our materials that hold us, that we might distribute your abundance with compassion. As we are fed from your table, move us to ensure every neighbor has enough in their pantries. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaim him your beloved Son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
After supper, he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Confident our Lord is at work in this meal, we offer the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is prepared. Come, taste and see. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace, Lamb of God. Shall we gather at the rear? <coughs> Bright angel feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. 
Will you please rise, you're able. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of awakening, with a wonderful diversity of languages and cultures, expressions, and identities, you create your people in your image. Send us forth, freed from prejudice and fear, that we may see your face in the faces of our neighbors near and distant. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. People of God, today you have witnessed God's steadfast love turning you from sin to life. You have been claimed by Christ. You have heard your name spoken. You have been made whole that you bear the image of God. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this day and every day, wherever you may go. by water sign and sealed by spirit flame we pledge ourselves anew to flee the lures of hell to cling to Christ's community in justice peace to dwell God bless us by your grace Remind us of your care, renewing spirit, fill us now, in spite of our work, our prayer. Remember and rejoice, renewed by floods of grace, we bear the sign of Jesus Christ, that time cannot erase. Go in peace and forth in love. Thanks be to God.